we won't bother with any introduction. He's one of the greatest players in the history of the game. Pete Sampras's record speaks for itself. 64 career tournament wins, 14 Grand Slams. And every so often you can catch a glimpse of the great man on the ATP Champions Tour. Still delighting the crowds and enjoying his tennis. You know, when I retired, I didn't do anything for three years and, you know, put on some weight, got a little soft, and I felt, you know, a little bit lazy, you know, and, and I think after that moment of three years of not doing anything to come back, get myself in shape, uh, play a little tennis is sort of, it's, it gives me a good balance. Sampras is still as competitive as ever. ATP Champions Tour events have strong fields, and the old rivalries haven't gone away. Tennis is very competitive. Um, you know, I think we all have a lot of pride. We all want to play well and win. Listen, it's not as cutthroat as it used to be 10 years ago when we were competing for majors, but you, you, you have a lot of pride, and we prepare, and, and uh, you know, every time I step on the court, I want to play well. It's just my ego, and, and you know, sometimes I'm not as sharp, and it gets frustrating, but at the same time, I don't put the time into the sport like I used to. I only maybe hit once every couple months, unless I have to. So, uh, you know, as a result, I'm not going to be as sharp. Away from the Champions Tour, the American also plays his fair share of exhibition matches. Spectators in San Jose were recently treated to an old school versus new wave match, when Sampras took on Frenchman Gael Monfils. Some veterans wouldn't have gone near the challenge. Well, it was tough, you know, it was it's sort of a tough situation for me to, to not have any confidence going into a match. I'm sort of, you know, I play a, a match and I take two months off, come back and to play Monfields, who's obviously a, a top 15 player, moves great. He was pretty nice to me, I must admit, during the match and, and he's a, a great kid and um, yeah, I was working pretty hard. I was physically tired at the end, you know, serving volleying every point for an hour and a half against someone that moves so well was tough. But I thought I'd competed pretty well and it, it gets, it's tougher as you get older. So what about today's game? Much has changed since Pistol Pete retired from the pro ranks nearly nine years ago. Not least, the technology. Racks changed, string has changed, the courts seem pretty much the same, balls seem relatively the same, and I think the players today are a little bit stronger, a little bit bigger. You look at all these guys, they're 6'3", 6'4", 210 pounds, so it, everyone's hitting it harder. I remember playing Bergasco last year in San Jose. I felt like, wow, the ball was jumping much more than I remembered. So technology has, has really improved. A new style of play dominates tennis now. How would a player like Sampras with his serve and volley game fare against the new breed of hard-hitting baseliners? I would play the same. I only, I only can play one way, one speed. Yeah, that's, that's to get in, come in, come chip and charge, put pressure on these guys. and. Um, it's just the only way I know how to play. Even today, I mean, I'm just all about coming in. It's tougher now for me because I don't move as well. I'm not as agile, but my game would, would hold up in any generation, I feel. I feel like when I was at my best, I felt unbeatable. Um, you know, technology's changed. It's helped guys return a little bit, but also would have helped me out using a bigger racket and strings. So it sort of evens out. Um, man, I love the guys staying back. I just licked my chops. Sampras's retirement coincided with the rise of another all-time great. But with Roger Federer now only two years younger than Sampras was when he retired, are we about to see another changing of the guard at the top of the ATP World Tour? Everyone's different. For me, it was an emotional decision. It wasn't physical. I felt like I could still keep playing, but it was, for me, I had nothing left to prove to myself. That's when I knew I was done. I didn't want to practice, didn't want to train. I think Roger will figure it out when it comes. You know, it, maybe it's, it could be mental, it could be physical, everyone's a little bit different. But he doesn't need advice from me. He's got, he's got a great team around him. He's obviously still playing great tennis. I still see Roger winning majors, um, doing great things in the sport. Um, but it, it does, you know, he's been out there a few years now and your body starts taking its toll and, you know, it, but he still can do it. Andre Agassi, Jim Courier, and Michael Chang. Sampras was part of a golden generation for US tennis in the 1990s. But with the last US Grand Slam success coming eight years ago, when will the best Americans be competing for the big prizes again?
You know, the Americans are sort of in that second tier um, with Andy and Isner and Sam Query. I mean, we're, we're doing okay. We're not where we want to be with winning majors being number one. You know, you're dealing with two of the greats of all time and Nadal and, um, and Roger. So it, it, it might take some years because what happened in the 90s was pretty special. And people want to see that every 10 years, and it's, it's, it's now possible. And uh, the game's gotten so global that, you know, you have guys from around the world playing tennis. Next week on ATP World Tour Uncovered, we're back on the red stuff as the clay tournaments in Houston and Casablanca take center stage. And living the life on tour, we get the inside track with Frenchman Jeremy Chardy and his girlfriend, Alex. Until then, don't forget to log on to atpworldtour.com for your 24-7 breaking news. And talk with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash atpworldtour and Twitter using at atpworldtour. See you next week.